Runoff coefficients are the ratio of runoff to precipitation volumes for each event. This training module describes the importance of the runoff coefficient statistics for defining the volume of runoff and defines methods used for estimating these statistics. This is training module 5.01a for the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model seldom. This presentation has 24 slides and will take about 16 minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway and administration. This training module has five learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to define the runoff coefficient, identify factors that affect runoff, identify and describe the runoff coefficient statistics, describe how statistics vary with imperviousness, and describe the relation between pre-storm flow and runoff coefficients. This presentation is a brief overview of the technical details for estimating and using runoff coefficient statistics for runoff quality analyses. Please see the Seldom Storm Flow Report, FHWA HEP 09005, and the Seldom Manual, U.S. Geological Survey Techniques and Methods Report 4C3, for more details. The runoff coefficient is the ratio of runoff to rainfall for each storm event. During each rainstorm, some water is absorbed, some fills surface depressions, some evaporates, and some infiltrates. The remaining water runs off into natural or man-made channels, which drain to the receiving stream. As this cartoon indicates, the proportion of runoff is expected to increase with increasing imperviousness. When we think of runoff coefficients, we think infiltration excess overland flow from impervious areas. Infiltration excess overland flow occurs when precipitation exceeds the infiltration capacity of a surface. These flows also can occur on pervious areas, receiving flows from neighboring impervious areas. Therefore, total impervious area is commonly a good explanatory variable for predicting runoff coefficient statistics. The total impervious area, TIA, is defined as the proportion or percent of contributing area occupied by anthropogenic impervious surfaces, which primarily consist of pavement and roofs. TIA can be expressed as a fraction, 0 to 1, or the percentage, 0 to 100, of the total drainage area. Seldom uses the impervious fraction to define the TIA of the highway site and the impervious basin. This is a schematic diagram of a basin in map view showing selected components of total impervious area. The total impervious area is used to define the runoff coefficients of the highway site and the upstream basin in Seldom. Data from 364 sites across the country with TIA values ranging from 0.0001 to 1 were examined to evaluate runoff coefficients. The site characteristics include a large range of drainage areas and land uses in different climate zones of the United States. This graph is a box plot showing volumetric runoff coefficient fractions that are less than or equal to 1 for 5,967 individual storm events from the 306 upstream basin sites used to develop seldom inputs. These runoff coefficients are grouped by impervious fraction intervals. The runoff coefficients are shown on a log scale on the vertical axis, and sites are grouped by impervious fraction along the horizontal axis. Each box plot shows the runoff coefficients for all sites in the impervious fraction category. The box covers the interquartile range from the 25th to the 75th percentile. The horizontal line within the box is the median, and the open circle is the average value. The whiskers extend from each end of the box to the 5th and 95th percentiles. The X symbols are the 1st and 99th percentile values. The triangle symbols are the minimum and maximum values. The number of sites in each category is shown above the graph. It is interesting to note that runoff coefficients for a site with low impervious fractions are greater than one might expect, and the runoff coefficients for highly impervious sites are lower than one might expect. However, research indicates that natural impervious areas such as rock outcrops, saturated wetlands, and on-stream ponds can act like directly connected impervious areas by conveying precipitation and groundwater discharge to the channel network as quick flow. Research also shows that several mechanisms reduce runoff from impervious areas. Bedrock outcrops are natural impervious areas. As with anthropogenic impervious areas, runoff from bedrock outcrops may flow directly to streams and wetlands, or runoff from bedrock outcrops may overwhelm the infiltration capacity of neighboring pervious areas. Saturation overland flows occur when rising groundwater submerges the land surface and makes the area impervious. This picture shows runoff from a swampy area in the Kootenay National Park, British Columbia, Canada, during a storm. Any precipitation that falls on this area will be conveyed to the stream with the groundwater discharge as runoff.
Similarly, this photograph of a farm field next to Black Earth Creek in Cross Plains, Wisconsin, shows the effects of a groundwater discharge on saturation overland flow. The rising water table contributes flow from the low spots near the stream network. Precipitation falling on such areas also contributes to runoff. Many highly pervious sites in the study had lower than expected runoff coefficients. However, many studies show that evaporation and infiltration from paved surfaces have mean values in the range of about 20 to 30 percent over many storms. These photographs are examples of cracks and joints in aged roadway surfaces. As pavement age increases, surface roughness also holds more water for post-storm infiltration and evaporation. Here is an example from a study site in Massachusetts. The area around a catch basin can be susceptible to differential settling and hence to cracks at points where flows concentrate. Wiles and Sharp, 2008, measured infiltration rates at 15 sites in Austin, Texas to estimate the secondary permeability of pavements using a double ring infiltrometer. They estimate that 21% of mean annual rainfall is available as potential recharge by infiltration through pavement. Some water is absorbed by impervious pavement, but the bulk of the infiltrating water flows through cracks and joints. They cite similar results from other studies in the literature. As this photograph indicates, splash and spray also may reduce runoff from highways and roadways. For example, Nicholson and Branson, 1990, did a study using small particles marked with fluorescent dye on a paved surface to quantify the mass of particles that spray up into the air by turbulence from a medium-sized vehicle traveling at 40 miles per hour. They found that one vehicle pass could mobilize 20 to 50 percent of these micron-sized particles, and two passes would remove 20 to 70 percent of these small particles from the travel lane. Seldom generates the runoff coefficients for each storm by using the frequency factor method with the mean, standard deviation, and skew of runoff coefficient values. This mean, standard deviation, and skew are fixed values for a given imperviousness. The skew of the runoff coefficient data defines the relation between the probability of currents and the frequency factor Ki. This equation translates uniform random numbers into a representative population of runoff coefficients. The TIA estimate is used in seldom to calculate runoff coefficient statistics. This graph shows the average runoff coefficients on a vertical axis and the impervious fraction on a horizontal axis. The dashed line is the regression relation developed for estimating the average runoff coefficient at highway sites, which are shown as triangles. The highway site regression equations were developed with data from 58 highway sites across the country with nine or more storm events that had drainage areas ranging from 0.05 to 106 acres and TIA fractions from 0.27 to 1. The two solid blue lines are the two-segment regression model developed for estimating runoff coefficients at non-highway sites, which are shown as white circles. The non-highway regression equations were developed with data from 167 sites across the country with nine or more storm events that had drainage areas ranging from 0.005 to 93.5 square miles and TIA fractions from 0.001 to 0.994. For these sites, the mean runoff coefficient increases gradually with imperviousness below a fraction of 0.55. The slope of the average runoff coefficient equation increases above this breakpoint for these sites. This breakpoint between segments is shown as the vertical gray line. Some sites have average runoff coefficients that seem too high for the measured TIA. These sites may be showing the effect of natural impervious areas such as bare rock, open water, or saturated wetlands. The seldom equation indicate lower runoff coefficients than some other equations from the literature. The seldom highway site and upstream runoff coefficient equations are shown as light blue lines on this graph. The equation developed by Schuler is commonly used for urban runoff studies and so is also shown in blue because it's available for use within seldom. Two other equations are shown for comparison. The highway site equation developed by Driscoll and others, and the urban basin equation developed by Becku and Pilati. Except for very low impervious fractions, less than about 0.1, the equations developed for use with seldom are lower than other regression lines. This is probably because seldom equations were developed using data from more sites, and they were developed using non-parametric regression methods. Therefore, these equations are less affected by extreme outliers. Furthermore, the two-segment model used for upstream sites eliminates the effect of highly impervious surfaces on the slope of runoff coefficients for sites with low TIA values. 
This graph shows the standard deviation of runoff coefficients on the vertical axis and the impervious fraction on the horizontal axis. The dashed line is the regression relation developed for estimating the standard deviation of runoff coefficients at highway sites, which are shown as triangles. The solid blue line is the regression model developed for estimating the standard deviation of runoff coefficients at non-highway sites, which are shown as white circles. The standard deviation of runoff coefficient values barely change with TIA. These slopes are not statistically significant. This graph shows the coefficient of skew of runoff coefficient on the vertical axis and the impervious fraction on the horizontal axis. The dashed line is the regression relation developed for estimating the skew of runoff coefficients at highway sites, which are shown as triangles. The two solid blue lines are the two segment regression model developed for estimating the skew of runoff coefficients at non-highway sites, which are shown as white circles. The breakpoint between segments is shown as the vertical gray line at an impervious fraction of 0.52. The skew of runoff coefficients decreases with increasing imperviousness. These equations produce negative skews for highway sites above a TIA value of 0.64 and for non-highway sites above a TIA value of 0.81. Negative skews occur at highly impervious sites because there are many storms with high runoff coefficient values, but some storms have low runoff coefficients. The selected statistics calculated using the TIA are used to generate a population of runoff coefficients. This graph shows the runoff coefficients generated for the upstream basin using the equations developed for non-highway sites. The runoff coefficients vary from 0 to 1 on a linear scale on the vertical axis, and the exceedance probabilities vary from 0.1 to 99.9 .9 on a nonlinear probability scale on the horizontal axis. The alternating blue and yellow lines show the population of runoff coefficients generated for TIA values between 0 and 100% with a 10% interval. The mean runoff coefficient increases gradually with imperviousness below an impervious percentage of 55, so the lines from the low TIA are closely spaced. The standard deviation of runoff coefficients does not change much with respect to TIA, so there are not large differences in slope among the different runoff coefficient populations. The skew of the runoff coefficients decreases with increasing TIA values, so the lines representing the different runoff coefficient populations transition from strongly concave up for sites with low imperviousness to a straight line at about 80% imperviousness to weakly concave down for higher impervious percentages. This graph shows one stochastic realization using different impervious values. However, many similar runoff coefficient populations may be generated using this approach. Seldom has a provision for correlating the upstream runoff coefficients with the pre-storm stream flows. Seldom has this capability because, in theory, higher pre-storm flows indicate wetter antecedent conditions that generate higher runoff flows. Data from the runoff coefficient dataset seem to support this assumption. This graph is a probability plot showing the percentage of the 43 sites with seven or more paired base flow and runoff measurements that have non-parametric rank correlation coefficients, Spearman's row, less than or equal to the specified value. Rank correlations are on a linear scale on the vertical axis, and the percent less than or equal to a given value is shown on a probability scale on the horizontal axis. The calculated row value is shown as the black circle. The vertical yellow line showed the 95% confidence limit for each value, which is a function of the row value and the sample size. Data sets with few storms have large 95% confidence limit intervals, and datasets with many storms have small 95% confidence limit intervals. If the confidence limit band crosses zero, the correlation coefficient is not statistically different from zero. Although the row values range from minus 0.2 to 0.9, the larger, statistically significant datasets have row values ranging from 0.6 to 0.9. Therefore, a value of 0.75 seems to be a good first approximation for planning level estimates for sites without data. A positive correlation coefficient will tend to increase larger storm flows and decrease smaller storm flows because more runoff may occur when the pre-storm flows are large. Seldom uses rank correlation to generate highway runoff coefficients from the upstream runoff coefficients because the two areas are adjacent. Correlations of runoff coefficients between the highway site and the upstream basin is a function of imperviousness of both sites. This graph is a contour plot of the rank correlation coefficient known as Spearman's row. The imperviousness of the highway site is on the vertical axis, and the imperviousness of the upstream basin is on the horizontal axis. The lines within the plot map areas of equal correlation. The highest correlation value, which is 
0.9875 occurs when both sites have impervious fractions equal to 1, 100% TIA. The maximum value is in the upper right corner. The lowest value is equal to 0.375 and occurs when one site has a TIA fraction of 1 and the other has a TIA fraction of 0. The minimum occur at the upper left and lower right corners. The local maximum values occur along the diagonal from the lower left to the upper right where the impervious fraction of both areas are equal. The maximum correlation increases with increasing TIA values because two adjacent highly developed areas are more likely to respond similarly than less developed areas. In this training module, we learn that the runoff coefficient is the ratio of runoff to rainfall for each storm event. The local hydrology and characteristics of surface features affect the runoff coefficients. The average standard deviation and skew of runoff coefficients characterize the population. The fraction of total impervious area has a substantial effect on the average and skew of runoff coefficients. The frequency factor method is used to generate these statistics in Monte Carlo analyses. Data indicate that pre-storm flows are correlated to runoff coefficients. A range of correlation values between 0.6 and 0.9 seems reasonable for many data sets. In seldom, the runoff coefficients for the highway site are correlated to runoff coefficients for the upstream basin because the two areas are presumed to be adjacent. The absolute maximum correlation occurs if both areas are completely impervious. The local maximum occurs if the impervious fractions are equal. The minimum correlation occurs if one site is completely impervious and the other is completely pervious.